Hi everybody, this is Crystal Ross. And basically I'm coming to you today because um, I just wanted to kind of encourage some people. Um, I wanted to know what it is, why Muslims were, you know, why people were, what's the big deal? And so I wanted to know what do they believe? Um, I knew, I've been told, but you always have to see it for yourself. So I went to um, Google, and Google just says that um, they reject Jesus as the Son of God, and they make him merely a prophet. The problem with this is that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Redeemer, the Redeemer of the whole world. He's the one that went and died on the cross and shed his blood for the remission of our sins so that we might have life. If you believe on him, you'll be saved. But he says, you can't come to God the Father but by me. Um, now, now, before Jesus, there were people who, who um, prepared the way, like John the Baptist. Um, but he, he was born the same time. About the same time as Jesus, people before him prophesied that you know of his coming, but before then they had the ritual sacrifices, and the ritual sacrifices was to get uh, a lamb without blemish or to bring your the best uh, of your uh, I don't know if they even had goats or whatever, but they had to bring their best. And they had to be they had to be like they couldn't be the maimed one, they couldn't be the lame, they couldn't have been like has the kind of defect. Like they had to have been a perfect sacrifice. And that was a representation of Jesus the Christ, the Son of God, coming and um, and giving his life. He was perfect when he walked the earth. He was without blemish. They couldn't even get anything on him. Sometimes Jesus was just quiet. He was like, I've already, see Jesus already, by the time it was, they were trying to, um, ask him who he was hey you said you was this and that he didn't even say anything because he had already done all his works he told his disciples he said now is the time that the son of man shall be betrayed and he was going to be betrayed by one of his own followers he chose 12 judas iscariot was the one who betrayed him for 30 pieces of silver which he threw back at the people that gave it to him because he realized it wasn't worth it he realized the magnitude of his sin he wouldn't have hung himself so let me just tell you, like, I'm really speaking to some Muslims today that um, a lot of Muslims are, I've seen news, a lot of Muslims are being converted. Listen, man is born but of a few days and um, our time is short. So it's time for you to accept Christ as, as head of your life, Lord and Savior, and just um, take a real look at who he is. And um, you need to pick up the Holy Bible. I would prefer, the, I would recommend the King James Version to you because once they get more translated, they get a little more watered down and it doesn't really convict your soul in your sin. So, um, Jesus wants us to love everybody. My problem with Donald Trump's statements and things like that is because God says, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. God doesn't want, he says, love your enemies, do good to them, those who despitefully use you, and he says, do good to them, pray for them, and bless them, and love them, so that's our commands for our enemies, people that we want to win over, he said, the man that wins souls is wise, people that want to win souls is not trying to um, push people out, you know what I'm saying, their souls yet to be won, and so and so when these radical extremists are going around and they're picking on people, they're picking on people who ain't converted yet, that's not how God works. He, he, Jesus died so that we can have an opportunity and we have that choice if it's not too late to make him head of our life. He died for all of us. He said, I came, he said, I came into the world not to condemn it, but to save it. He don't want God, don't want none of us to be lost. He, he, that's why he sent his only begotten son. Even Jesus cried out to the Father, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? Because the sins of the world was upon him and he was perfect and he had done no sin. And he felt apart from his Father. But you know, sin, they say sin separates us. You know, he had to die. And then, um, 
they buried him in a tomb um, it was from Friday was it Friday Friday Saturday Sunday Sunday Friday to Sunday and he rose and then there was an angel sitting there to say you know what he's not here and um, but Jesus did appear to Mary the two Marys and was like go tell the disciples I'm coming well nobody believed him and when he did appear to his disciples they wanted to see the imprints in his hands and in his feet when we get to heaven those who believe on his name and receive what he's done his shed blood for the remission of your sins you you know he's the son of god he is the christ you you yeah so you can be set free healed and delivered but you're not gonna you he says no man cometh unto the father but by me so if you reject his name he said if you are ashamed of me before the father i'm gonna be ashamed of you before the father when i come in glory with the angels at the end i'm gonna be ashamed of you if you reject me you're gonna be rejected so and we have to forgive he said and if you do not forgive those who have done you wrong if you don't forgive i won't forgive you so at this point, it is time for us to come back to Christ. It's time for us to do things His way. Not what man says. But man, man is, God says, He's not a man that He should lie. Neither the Son of Man that He should repent. He says, so I don't lie. He says, in the beginning was the Word. The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. This is why we need to read the Bible. His holy words. Holy scriptures. God and the Holy Spirit are one. And Jesus is Jesus Christ is in his Father because of the work of the Holy Ghost. I'm saying to the to you this. Truly no man cometh unto the Father but by Jesus. Um it, what what the what the Muslims are saying and teaching reminds me when Jesus was actually here what they said about him you know they played him in his own town oh that's Mary's son that's just Mary's son you know what I'm saying so Jesus was like man their hearts are cold or whatever like they don't I can't even perform miracles in my town because they know who I am they say I'm just Mary's son I'm just David's son no excuse me Joseph he's from that lineage so he had to dip. He had to go somewhere else where he, where people didn't know him. You understand? Well, couldn't they couldn't just be like, oh yeah, that's just that's just our neighbor. That's just that's just Jesus. No, Mary and Joseph didn't have Jesus together. Jesus was put in there by the Holy Ghost. Okay, so Mary didn't come together with Joseph to have Jesus. That's why Joseph friends was ready to stone her because Joseph said, I didn't do that. And he, Joseph had to ask. And Joseph was like, "What's up, man? Well, I, you know, I ain't been with this woman. What's going on?" And he, an angel came to him in a dream, I'm trying to be a uh, uh, correct. He said, "No, this is by the Holy Ghost. This is the work of the Holy Ghost. Don't stone her. This is Jesus, the Son of God. His name shall be called Jesus. You know, so you know, because he was ready to put her away. Um, maybe not stone her, but." let's just put her away let's just move on and so when he he had to believe that word the, the problem here is with your belief because when the man said i think he asked jesus to heal my son and he said lord help thou mine unbelief because can't nobody make you believe something i've tried i said i had to tell my friend i we he said i know about the bible we've talked about it and i'm like well what's the problem i said man you just gonna have to believe now it's already done. It's out there. The word, the Bible is out there. We've done. I've done all the talking I'm, I can do here. Now it's up to you. Believe what you have read. Believe what you have seen. Because the unbelievers are not going to make it. If you cannot believe, this is not, this is not your, um, this is not just some book that you buy, books a million shelf. This is not, um, you know all these other things that are going on in the world today this book has been preserved from ancient times this is um this book has been preserved because the bible says don't add or take away from the words in this book 
And when you get the revelation, said, don't add or remove the words from this book or your name will be removed from the Lamb Book of Life. And that's the book when he opened and see that your name is your name in here if you're making it into the kingdom of heaven. And that's how serious it is. And that's why I tell you about all these other books that these prophets, as my friend Jimmy says, calls them prophet liars. <laughs> um, that you know, these are just man written books. They have error. And a lot of them are written, um, I, I call it just for to control. I mean, because you got a lot of people out here just want to just wanna manipulate people into doing what they want them to do. And if you're that weak-minded, that you start with a book, another book, outside of the Word of God. Because every book that is written and has to do with the Lord, say if like somebody wanted to talk about, talk about, expand upon their life, what happened to them? They know if they're a child of God and they're serving Him, they're really supposed to be, um, they're letting the light shine. But the light is of the Lord, Lord God, light of Christ. Um, let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. It should point back to God and God's Word. That's why it takes people, you know, that's why it's nothing to play with. It's ministry. You're trying to win souls to Christ and you want to be accurate. You want to be accurate. You want to be accurately um, in line with the scripture, the Holy Scriptures found in the manuscript, the Holy Bible. And this is why I stay away from prophet written books. I call them false prophets. So, uh, because it's too much error, it's too much, you know, you can, they can, they can have you going in one direction and have you all mixed up. When you can simply read the Holy Bible and get it for yourself. And if you need help, talk to your pastor. You know, talk to an elder, talk to a friend. Um, do your research. Um, Google. Google what you're looking for. Open Bible is a good tool. Bible Gateway, a good dictionary. The strong, the strongest, strongest, exhaustive concordance of the Bible is a free strongs online. If you're seeking God, he may be, he says, seek him while he may be found. You seek him, you'll find him. Call upon him while he's near. Call upon his holy name. Call upon Jesus. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. For real. So you can't stand upon any man. You can't stand upon man's word. Man didn't die for you. Your daddy didn't die for you. I mean, we're supposed to bear our cross, but I'm talking about there had to be a perfect lamb to die for me. Somebody who couldn't accuse me of sin. And that man's name is Jesus. He's perfect. The accuser of the brethren is Satan. So that's why I'm telling y'all, Jesus is the man. You know what I'm saying? You need to learn about him. And so if you want somebody to learn something, do you go around saying, um, People are, if you know, if you don't believe already, you already condemned. Something like that the Bible says. So you don't need to go say anything to them. You need to come to them in love. Share light. You know what I'm saying? Just share share the truth. How about just sharing a testimony of how the Lord God changed your life and saved you and made you whole. And that's just enough. Share scriptures. Share, share the word. A lot of times people are raised in homes where, I, I know this for a fact, they don't believe. You know, and they, they, they raise their children. And when we, as teachers and preachers and da-da-da, we, God keeps sending people our... And this is the problem, my problem, with the, the public school system <clears throat> is because they try to put... It's, it's not really a lot, but there's this fear, spirit of fear, and God has not given us spirit of fear. But power, love, and a sound mind to talk about Jesus in a classroom. So let his power and presence and make it known. You know what I'm saying? To say you're a Christian and make it known. You know, he tried to shut Christian's mouth when sometimes Muslims are sitting in the classroom. Sometimes atheists are sitting in the classroom. Sometimes troubled kids are sitting in the classroom. You know, kids of all different backgrounds, but we all have one thing in common. God created us. God made us. And Jesus is his son, and Jesus is still working today. So, why can't we? That pro My problem is, is that that is the perfect opportunity. Or if that child never, if that child, everybody might not be able to step up their foot. Some par people, children's parents might not take them to church. But Christians, whenever you have an opportunity to reach a soul for Christ Jesus, use it. 
Don't worry about the consequences. He'll give you what to say. Let him, let him order your steps. Let him direct your paths. I used to teach in the school system. He says, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. The steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. But don't ever be ashamed of, his, of Jesus' name. Don't ever be ashamed. He'll be ashamed of you. And let me tell you something. The devil will run rough, 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 what they call it, rough shot all over you. If you don't profess his name. His name has power. So, that's how they used to cast out devils. In Jesus' name. In his name. You know what I'm saying? So, there's power in his name. When Jesus came down, he was the first one to cast out devils. You know, so... That's what they say. But, um... Yes, I'm still learning. So, I'm just trying to share... Um... As far as an account of what I can remember and recall. So, um... I'm just saying that... We can't discredit it. We can't discredit God... We can't discredit the Holy Ghost. And and there is power in Jesus' name. So I hope someone gets this today. And just, I hope you got the my PowerPoint. It's to spread the love of Jesus abroad throughout all the earth. So we can, so he says, once, once this gospel has been, been preached throughout the whole world, then shall the end come. We ain't got time to be ashamed. We ain't got time to be... Uh, we ain't got time for none of that. None of that. I got to keep my job. I, oh, okay, okay. I bet you I was up in there. I bet you I was up in there doing my job. And that's that's when God set you up. You ain't got to worry about all that. That's your job. Your job is to keep control of your, of your classroom as a teacher. How are you going to do that without Jesus? People have respect they understand if you serve god the creator of the whole world and all power is in his hand the earth is his footstool please tell me what does some little bitty tiny little yeah i mean he says if the earth is his footstool what is your problem don't you think he got you he jesus called um when they was talking about taxes and stuff he said i need you to go and get and fish and bring that penny for me so we can pay taxes like meaning the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof the inhabitants and they that dwell therein and the, the verse that's coming to mind is what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul i don't like putting people on blast but i thought about this People, there are people who are very, very rich, who very have a lot of money, but they're they're obviously known to be uh, what do you call it? Um, they call them secular artists. They call them um, worldly. Um, but when I look at, I, I try to find figures. Who is actual? Who can I actually account that to? Like, who is that today? That's rap artists, you know, uh, people like Jay-Z, Beyonce. Those are only people that I can think that have a whole lot of money. Um, now that I think about humble preachers, people who somebody, you know, I was listening to Dr. Martin Luther King yesterday on the radio. And it really touched me because I don't have everything. He talked about when I die, don't talk about, don't tell everybody the degrees I got. And don't tell them, he said, tell them I was a servant. Because the Bible talks about if you want to be the greatest, you're going to have to be a servant. <laughs> the greatest is going to be the one serving. Like, you you know what I'm saying? Like, you just care about people and you love people. And you're trying to take care of people's needs. You're trying to meet their need. Um, knowing God to take care of you. All your needs. Food, shelter, clothing. When Jesus and them went out, man, people, they slept in people, you know, they stayed in people's homes and and such and so forth. But what I'm saying is, is that he will supply all of your needs. And so, please hear me when I say this, that um, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Do I love Muslims? Yes, of course I do. Um, they're physically beautiful. 
<laughs> um, I think the scarves are pretty, but my only thing is that um, it's about really what's in your heart. Um, you know, when they wear the scarf, that just shows what's in their heart. And it's illegal to go around and kill people. That's why we have police officers. That's why we have a court and judicial system. You don't kill, if you kill a person because of what they believe, and they're not doing anything to you to try to hurt or harm you, the justice, the law says, it, that's not self-defense. You just went out and took out people who didn't agree with your beliefs. That's called murder. And the Bible says, um, we are to fear those who bear the sword and honor the law, the land. It keeps order. It's set up by God. So, yeah, they're adding new stuff, like um, the gay law. See, what I think what they did with that, gays really just want the same thing. Just like Muslims, nobody wants to be beat up, beat up on and killed. But I think that somebody uh, heard something else and said, oh, we'll let them marry too. No, what they really just needed was, you know, they wanted to marry and all of this. That's outside of the will of God, of God. That's not, and that's not scriptural. That is actually an abomination. It's disgusting to God. So God knows that he does not agree with that. Um... So they really and, and truly have been fighting just for, they, they want protection. But obviously there was some twisted and, and people up in the, um, in higher organizations and government who were able to say, hey, well, why don't we just, you know, and it's, it's, it's disgusting for me to even talk about it. So we know that these things are wrong. And there are going to be some things that are happening, going to happen in this world that are going to blow your mind. But you need to be rooted and grounded in, in, in love, in Jesus, in God. You need to get in, in your Holy Bible and start reading your scriptures because we're living in the last days. And in this time, there's going to be some false prophets in the land. There's going to be some false Christ. There's going to be people saying, follow me. Um, somebody said something funny. Um, if somebody was walking up the street right now and said he was, uh, and he was really a false Christ, or he, you know, don't you know he'd have some followers? Because we're, you know, you have to be in your word. Um, I go to a church and I don't agree with everything that they that, that their denomination preaches. Um, but I didn't agree with everything where I was at. I understand that every church has has is not perfect, has its issues. And I've advocate I've advocated, I've said, hey, you know what? We just need to stick with the word. But it's such a tradition, and the Bible talks about traditions of men and doctrines that they're not going to be hearing the word. You know, they're not going to, they just, itch ears itching, come on Holy Ghost, for things that make the flesh feel good. Why would anybody want to read the word? Because it convicts the soul. Everybody don't like that, having to make a change, because they're embarrassed. You are, you know, what you do in the dark will already come to light, so you got to do something about it anyway. You say you're a Christian, you got to change anyway. You can't commit adultery. You got to follow the Ten Commandments and you got to follow the rest of the word. So why not just go ahead and admit you're wrong and do something about it? And he give you in his holy word um, the accurate way to deal with it. What to do. If you have a fault with someone, go to that person. Put your gift down before the altar. You offering up instant. You offering up all your offerings and stuff. And you ain't even you really on the altar because you still mad at somebody. You ain't even went and said, I'm... Hey, get made it right with. Get that off your mind. And so, you know, it's just common sense stuff. But that common sense is of the word. Because we don't know. We just, we do things our way. We just, when we mad, we don't want to deal with so-and-so. But the Lord says you have to love your enemies. You have to do good to them. You have to bless them and pray for them. So, all this and that to say is that I love you all. And you're accepted and in the beloved. God loves you. And even God loves you period he don't want you to be lost that's why he used people like me to give my testimony and be like you know what Jesus came to save you he came to save you and your sins you don't have to you don't have to live that life you don't have to live a life you he says you can live you can have life and have it more abundantly in Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior you don't have to go out here the manual is, is the manual is the holy scriptures the holy bible i say the king james version you'd be doing real good i got the 1769 oxford edition um of the king james version of the holy bible app 
I like my King James version. And so, man, come on, we don't really have no excuse, man. We, if you really just look at it, if you keep, my daddy said, keep life simple. Don't make it complicated. Life is complicated enough. Keep it simple. And so, really, that's what the word is. It just it's telling people's um, experiences and stories, and and giving, offering advice and how to make it in this world. Jesus comes and offers his advice. Paul, after Jesus comes and offers his advice, and there's a lot of things that happen in Moses' life and Abraham's life and uh, Elijah and the and the lineage of uh, of Christ. You know before he came the israelites and it's a beautiful story man it's my second time going around reading it and i can just tell you that life in christ is so worth it it's it's worth the ridicule it's worth it's worth the joking and jeering because at the end of the day that at the end of that finger they're going to have to face life themselves they're going to have to face that decision they're going to have to make a choice for christ you say you're a christian you're going to have to make a choice too you're gonna to have to choose what you're gonna what you're doing right now it's not working you have to follow Christ you get in your word because I can tell you and try to preach you the preacher can kind of try to preach you but he only got so long but you can just pick up the book if you can pick up the book any other book you can pick up a people magazine you can go to books a million pick up a book but I've done all that and to no avail I mean these books were so hard to live up to because they were written by a man they were just like how to be a Christian this and, that. and I'm following their life but I'm like my aunt put up my aunt Monica Williams yeah leave her alone tell her thank you she put a Bible in my hands and I had the only Bible before that was given to me I might have gotten one from my church I'm not sure but I was given a Gideon Bible on campus and I began to read it and wow it was given to me on a day I really needed it it was probably one of them life-changing days. I'm probably about to make a decision. Somebody put a Bible in my hand. Lord knows. He had some people on campus handing out Gideons. And the problem for me was like, where's the rest of this Bible? I know this is the New, New Testament. Where's the Old? Because those are really cheap. You can get those online, the Gideons, uh, for like a dollar from Dollar Tree. But it's, it's, for me, I really want to give out, I want to give out the whole Bible. Cause I want people to sit down and read the whole story. Um, we have to follow both. The Old Testament is a testament to the New Testament. You can't have the New Testament without the Old Testament. You just can't because it's a it's a continuing story. It's like somebody just seeing me today and thinking I just am an angel and appeared out of like I'm a messenger, but I actually was born. I have a family. You know, I have a lineage. You know, what I'm saying this is real. You know, so. Uh, when I get married, you know, there's somebody I'm going to share my, you know, I actually have a story. I like to share my story. And so what I'm saying is I just want y'all to pay, wake up and pay attention and stop, you know, stop living in a fantasy world and a dream world. Make believe. Um, nothing, none of this is made up. Like, it's not just like, well, let me just tell you a good story. No, let me tell you a, the real story. Let me tell you what really happened. That's what the Bible is. Let me give you a, a, an, an account of events, an accurate account of people's lives. Let me, let, me, let me tell you a story. Let me tell you what happened to David and Goliath. When David was speaking blasphemy, blasphemy and, um, and all this about to the children of Israel trying to scare them. And he just got um, thumped out with a stone that was slain in a slingshot by David. And David took off his head so it's real man it's real and these people are really waiting gonna be waiting to meet us in heaven man there's some people already in heaven like 